Okay, so the first rule of Kanban is this. We must make all of your work visible. It must be visual. And for those of us who have low follow-through scores in our Colby profile, this is literally a miracle. So what does it mean by visual? It means this. It means when I walk through my door, which is just there, right, in the morning, because remember, because of my low follow-through, even though I love OmniFocus, even though I love to do it, even though I love getting things done, and in the back in the day, I loved Filofax, and I loved all those processes. I've been to more productivity courses than you can chuck a stick at, and not one of them stuck till now. And it was because I was fighting my cognitive Colby nature. And that is that for me, anybody with low follow through needs a process that was visual. So when I was reading all of this Kanban and Scrum and all of these sorts of things that we're talking about, all of a sudden, you know, it was literally a light coming on. It was extraordinary. And so what did that mean? So visual meant literally that it must be physical in the open. You must be able to see it. You must literally put your board where you can see it. Well, you can't avoid it, right? Because once you can visually analyze this information, it's way more powerful. Imagine a map, okay? You can look at a map and within a second, you can absorb there's highways, there's petrol stations, gas stations for you Americans, there's uh, there's automatic telemachines, there's the the local supermarket. You can see all of those things, names, and you can absorb that information literally in a couple of seconds. Now imagine if I delivered that as a list to you, a list of all the streets, a list of all the banks, a list of all the gas stations, a list of all the things. How could you possibly process that information? It would be tricky, right? Yet that's what we're doing when we're looking at to-do lists. We're looking at these vertical lists of information that are designed to be read. Okay, whereas if we can represent our information visually, we can absorb that much more information that much more quickly. And as you will learn, as we start putting up our boards and I start giving feedback, it's unbelievable what you can learn just by being able to visually grab that information. So that's one reason that visual is so important. Another reason visual is so crucial is it's all about stopping thinking in your head and thinking on paper, getting your thoughts outside your head. Right now, if most of you are trying to capture and hold most of the information in your head. You know, it's sort of like this big pile of post-it notes here. This is, you know, the, and each post-it note, you know, your head is taking uh, its capacity, that that is using caloric capacity in your brain to remember this piece, even if it's not conscious at the time. Right? That's your brain at work. We talked about in our first module the Zagernik effect. And the Zagernik effect is incredibly powerful in the sense that every one of these bits of information that you're trying to hold in your head requires capacity. And if you are trying to get into deep work, into flow, into creating content, and all of this stuff is sitting in your head, you've got Buckley's chance little Australianism there. You've got no chance, right? It's so much harder. And again, if you're working for yourself and you've got a nine to five or you're trying to turn your plan A into a plan B, it's made even worse because not only you've got all your business stuff, but you've got all your first, you know, your day job, you've got all of the family stuff, all of those sorts of things. How is this organizational? Now, I could have these in a neat pile or in a, a in in a list like we do on a some sort of visual planner. And remember, I'm mainly talking to our lower follow through, you know, five, six, and below follow through people in Colby. Okay, I know you high follow throughs are like going, is he mental? Of course, I love a list. Lists are awesome. I can list and follow a process like nobody's business. Trust me. The vast majority of us don't 
get you, <laughs> right? We wish we did, but we don't. So what's this mean? So at the moment, we've got this horrible, like this is our brain, okay? This is our brain here. It's this pile of things that we would like to do, and it's this mess. Whereas if we're able to visually, how much better already do you feel if you can visually see what's out there? Your brain gets, and there's a whole bunch of science which I'm not gonna bore you with, literally can relax because it goes, you know what? It's all on the board. It's okay, I know where it is. It's here, I won't forget it. I've put up a, something in my options column and I know it's there. So when eventually I decide it's important and I'm gonna do it, it's there, it's ready to go. Okay, so getting it out of your head kills the Zagurnik effect, which opens you up to flow, the work state that you want to be in when you're creating good stuff, particularly, like if you've got half an hour here, half an hour there, you can get a lot done if you're not processing a whole bunch of stuff in the background. So that visualization is crucial. Another problem we have with keeping stuff in our head is looping. One of the best pieces of advice I got a few years ago was think on paper, right? When you're brainstorming, when you're doing exercises, when you're thinking about, think on paper. And that combined with what I'm gonna teach you here with uh, Kanban is incredibly powerful. Again, the science is in on this, the fantastic book, Brain Rules. For a lot of you, and I'm talking low follow throughs, Standing up and being able to work with a board visually like this is a much more pleasurable activity. You feel like you're doing something. You feel like you're making progress. You're doing, and this is not something, until you experience it, which you're going to this very week, it's hard to describe, but it becomes more playful. It becomes more fun because you're getting it out of your head. Because what happens when you get in loops in your head, all of a sudden you're going, you know, I think I'll do this experiment, but ah. Oh, you know what, I don't know if this works. And I'm talking to you high fact finders here and high follow through. This is something you will experience. You'll think, oh, maybe I should do that Facebook campaign, but oh, I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I don't know, maybe I'll do some more research into it. Maybe I'll think about the processes. Maybe I'll do the content and nothing gets done because you're allowing, you're looping in your head. So by having this visualization, it's incredibly powerful. So the first law of this process, this personal process, is it must be visual. Now let's keep going and explain what this board actually is.